Hi everyone, good morning, and welcome back to our S3 ethics class. Today we're going to continue our discussion about religions, but I would like to focus on one specific religion, which is Christianity. Now most of you might already be familiar with Christianity after all, it's a long-standing religion, it's a large religion as well. Um, a lot of people are familiar with Christian beliefs and practices. However, there might be one thing about Christianity that you might not know, which is the fact that there isn't one kind of Christianity. Actually, there are different types of Christianity or different groups within Christianity, different types of Christians. Now, when I talk about Christianity, I often refer to this great, funny, exciting movie that I like. It's called Scott Pilgrim vs. the World. There's a memorable scene in the movie where Scott Pilgrim is with Ramona Flowers at her place, and Ramona offers Scott tea. She asks him, what would you like? And she enumerates all the kinds of tea that she has in her place. Scott is surprised because he didn't know that there was more than one kind of tea. Now, you can say the same thing of Christianity. Let me show you. Here on this slide, you can see a kind of family tree of Christianity. If you focus on the bottom, it shows you that Christianity has its roots in the religion of the Jewish people, which is called Judaism. Christianity would develop on its own for many centuries. However, in 1054, there would be a great schism or a great split between the Roman Catholic Church and the Eastern Orthodox Church. After a few centuries, there would be another event in uh, 1517 when a priest, Martin Luther, would start criticizing the Catholic Church, criticizing its beliefs and practices. And because of these things, you know, many people would start leaving the, the Catholic Church and they would begin to establish their own Christian groups, their own Christian religions. So as a consequence, you would have different types, many more different types of Christians, like in England, the Anglican Church, the Reformed Church in many places in Europe, uh, Lutheran groups, and then eventually you would have Episcopalians, Unitarians, uh, Baptists, Presbyterians, and so on. You can read more about this online. For instance, uh, I, I found this on a Wikipedia page. If you have time, you can look at this on your own. But this schema or this tree shows you a similar thing, that there are actually different strands or different types of Christianity. Now, having said that, we have to bear in mind that even if there are different small groups of Christians or smaller groups of Christians in Christianity. Christians actually believe in the same things, in the same basic things. Now, as we talk about these beliefs, uh, these core features of Christianity, you will see at the same time that we would be discussing or speaking about them in terms of the different dimensions of religion that uh, Minion Smart introduced and you've already seen that for instance christianity is a very large religion it has over two billion believers or members you can say that that's a, the social dimension of christianity meaning that christians have this feeling have this sense that they are part of one community because they have shared beliefs. Now, there are core beliefs in Christianity. 
if you are a Christian, you typically believe that Jesus was the Messiah or the Chosen One. Jesus was the Son of God. And as the Son of God, He was sent to, to help and save humankind from the consequences of sin. What is sin? Sin is, um, sin is when uh, people violate or disobey the commandments of God. Now, some aspects, some, some beliefs in Christianity were developed by more intellectual people. So, for instance, um, Christians believe that there is one God, they believe in one God, but this God has appeared to, to human beings in three ways, as God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. I repeat, if you're a Christian, you believe in one God, but this God has three persons, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Moving on, Christianity also has a narrative dimension. If you remember, narrative means that um, Christians believe in stories. They have stories that they tell themselves and they tell each other and they tell their children in the next generation. For instance, that they have stories about the creation of the world and that Jesus Christ was born to Mary and Joseph, and there are stories in the Bible about the life of Jesus Christ and the miracles he performed and eventually how he suffered and died on the cross. The belief of uh, members of a particular religion are also expressed in material things. Christians go to church, or they're supposed to go to church every Sunday, and the church is a physical manifestation of an expression of their belief. There are other material things that are linked to particular religions. So, for instance, you have the Bible, and in the case of Christianity, you have uh, the kinds of chairs that uh, you have in church, you have the, the kinds of clothing that priests wear. And like any other religion, there is uh, an institutional dimension to Christianity, meaning there's a kind of a hierarchy within the church. You have ordinary people, we call them lay people. Then you have the leaders, the priests who guide these people. There are more special kinds of priests like bishops who have more authority and influence and power in the church. And some bishops become cardinals, and from a group of cardinals, the Pope is chosen, and the Pope is the leader of the entire Catholic Church. Now, certain dimensions can overlap. For instance, the Bible is the sacred text of Christianity for Christians. That's the holiest text, but at the same time, the Bible contains the, the narratives, the stories that Christians believe in. Lastly, Christians have certain rituals. Rituals are those things that people do repeatedly or regularly. So people pray, Catholics go to confession, Christians go to mass or to service. There are certain celebrations that are important to them, like Christmas, Easter, Lent, and uh, on these particular days, on these particular occasions, Christians go to church or go, go to their places of worship. So, what have we seen here? We have seen that there are different types of Christianity. Uh, there are different historical reasons for this fact. Christians have particular beliefs. Uh, they share certain fundamental beliefs, like belief in the Trinity, belief in Jesus Christ as the Messiah. Um, there are different dimensions to 
Christianity as well. You have stories, you have physical things that express their faith. You have uh, a hierarchy within the church, and you have the rituals that that Christians repeat regularly. I hope all of that is clear. I will see you in the next class.